Good afternoon to everyone. Welcome to CBNBC. Welcome to our worship service here today on the Lord's Day. We are blessed by God that we can still worship God in spirit and truth through this Facebook live streaming. And uh, so we also encourage everyone, please share the live streaming on your Facebook wall and uh, let us tune in our hearts today as we're going to worship God and our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Now, uh, if you're in your living room or wherever you are, we're going to sing our opening song. And if you want to stand, you're welcome to do that. Or if you're sitting with your family in, in the couch or if you want to stand, that is uh, it's up to you. But we're going to sing to the Lord today. And uh, we are going to sing uh, our first opening song. And we are going to have an instrumental uh, played by Sister Yulin that has been recorded. And there are going to be lyrics on the screen. So, um, so you're welcome to sing along as we worship the Lord. Our first song will be Leaning on the Everlasting Arms. Let us pray. Father, we thank you so much for what you have done by giving your son Jesus to die for us on the cross. And we believe that you raised him again on the third day. And we thank you, Father, that by his blood that was that was spilled on Calvary on the cross. We have been redeemed. We have been repurchased. That is the price of our souls. And Father, we thank you that we can gather today in the name of your Son as your people and as your children to worship you, to stand in awe of you, to reverence you, to magnify you and glorify you. Father, we pray that your hand would be upon our worship service, 
that you would bless all those who are listening and tuning in, that your word would speak to our hearts, that you would do a great work within our hearts through your word and through the Holy Spirit. I pray that you will fill us with your spirit, with your love, with your peace, and with your power, and that you would help us and instruct us in the ways you want us to go, because you are worthy of all honor, praise, and glory. Father, we worship you today on this Lord's Day, and we thank you, Father, for who you are and what you are about to do. And may you get glory for yourself, Father, today, in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's sing our opening hymn, Grace is Greater Than Our Sin.
Amen. We thank the Lord for the blood he shed on Calvary's cross for the redemption of our souls. Now, if you have your Bibles, you may turn it to the book of Psalms. This is for our responsive reading. And uh, I'm going to read verse number one. And you are welcome to read verse number two. I will read the third. You will read the fourth and so on. And we'll read the last and ninth verse together. So that is Psalm number 99. Psalm 99. And I'll begin. The Lord reigneth, let the people tremble. He sitteth between the cherubims, let the earth be moved. Let them praise thy great and terrible name, for it is holy. The king's strength also loveth judgment. Thou dost establish equity. Thou executest judgment and righteousness in the court. Exalt ye the Lord our God, and worship at his footstool, for he is holy. He spake unto them in the cloudy pillar. They kept his testimonies and the ordinance that he gave them. Thou answerest them, O Lord our God. Thou wast a God that forgavest them, though thou tookest vengeance of their invention. And altogether, exalt the Lord our God and worship at his holy hill, for the Lord our God is holy. May God add blessing upon the reading of his word. And I will sing our prayer song before our pastor will pray for us.
Praise the Lord for this wonderful Sunday that we have uh, joined together again in this worship through live streaming and uh, online service. And we are so glad that to those who are watching us online, uh, we are privileged to be a part of your worship to the Lord. Uh, despite we are here in this uh, location here in uh, Kubner Kirken, where we hold our services here of Copenhagen Bethel Missionary Baptist Church. And thank you for watching and joining with us. As you have been instructed by Brother Philip, you can uh, click the start party so that all your friends or your contacts will be able to participate and join with us in this uh, wonderful service. And at the same time, um, you may also share it to some of your groups or your friends or your loved ones of whom you love them to know the Lord Jesus Christ. And um, today we're going to uh, give our thanksgiving, our praise to the Lord for the answers to our prayers, as well as to those special prayer requests that we have received from the brethren, as well as we know that you have some uh, concerns uh, that you are praying for, especially in this uh, uh, pandemic uh, situation. And many of your friends, perhaps, perhaps or loved ones, uh, had been uh, infected by this disease. And we pray for the cousin of Sister Nancy uh, Pagio, uh, our member in Malmo Bethel Missionary Baptist Church, her cousin living in and working in England, uh, has been infected by this disease. Let us pray for her, as well as to those who have recovered from the disease, like our uh, 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 a member from the mission in Barcelona, or rather in the Netherlands, uh, uh, Brother Rubin, uh, who just got out from the hospital. Uh, let's continue to pray for the complete recovery uh, for for his condition. And we have also our loved ones, perhaps your friends or relatives who are um, working as a frontliners. They are nurses or doctors or anyone um, involved in the contact to people because uh, they are serving in different capacities, perhaps in the military service, in the police department or in the grocery stores. Uh, here in Denmark, they have already opened since uh, last uh, Monday, uh, opening the malls and other institutions. Uh, but we still observe uh, social contact, and we are so glad to hear yesterday uh, there was uh, zero death toll, and hopefully it will continue to be so, despite the fact that there are some who are still in the hospital and are uh, still recovering and even connected with the respirator. We just pray continually that God would uh, uh, reveal and, and show uh, the health authorities regarding the vaccine or uh, the, uh, uh, the medicine uh, to fight against this coronavirus. So uh, hopefully as soon as it is uh, uh, easing the lockdown, there are more institutions and departments in different uh, businesses here in Denmark are opening and perhaps this coming weekend then the, uh, the government is allowing uh, church services perhaps and I don't know if there are some limitations up to a maximum of 10 people. Uh, it remains to be seen as we will see the curve that is uh, getting uh, down. So right now we know that you have some uh, prayer concerns or prayer requests that you want to include in our prayers and you may um, uh, join with me in this prayer. And before I'm going to pray, I just want to congratulate the CBNBC family for the 30th uh, uh, anniversary uh, last Wednesday, uh, May 13th. And we have a Zoom conference with uh, many members uh, scattered in different places around uh, Europe. And we are so glad that they have joined and participated. And we're rejoicing of God's faithfulness uh, to uh, 
his church and as he promised that he will be with his church even to the end of the age and that is what we are thankful and grateful to God let us pray together father we are so thankful for this time once again in this live streaming and online service we gathered together in different homes and Lord we believe what you have mentioned in your word that two or three gathered in your name you are in the midst of us you are here in this um, uh, locality here in this church building you are also there in the area of all those who are watching us online in their respective homes, in their living rooms, or wherever they have met uh, to gather together to worship you in this uh, very important uh, Sunday that we honor and glorify you. Lord, we thank you for your faithfulness. We thank you, Lord, for your love, for your care. And even, Lord, thank you for answering our prayers. And our request, O oh God, goes to those who are infected by the virus, O oh Lord. We lift them up, O oh God. We remember, remember them in our particular prayers today that you will heal them, O oh God. We pray for the cousin of Sister Nancy Pagu, uh, living in England and affected or infected by the virus. O oh Lord, intervene into her life. And uh, our prayers, if he, she's not yet saved, that she will come to know Jesus as her Lord and personal Savior. Because we consider it, Lord, the most important thing. A person you should make their decisions in life. Because that is our hope. That despite the fact that if even we are cured of this disease, it does not mean that we will not die anymore. We know that physical death is the result of sin, but you gave us eternal life, the spiritual uh, birth that comes through Christ our Lord and Savior as we repent of our sins and, and, um, and accept him as our Lord and personal Savior. So our prayers, O oh Lord, are to everyone who are watching us online and that even in this recorded video that they will come to know Christ as their Lord and personal Savior because that is your mandate towards your New Testament church. That is your uh, marching orders uh, that we should go and teach all nations and baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost and teaching them all things whatsoever you have commanded us. Lord, thank you for your promise that you will be with your church even to the end of the age. Lord, we thank you for CBMBC, Copenhagen Bethel Missionary Baptist Church that has existed here in Copenhagen, Denmark for 30 years. Lord, thank you, Lord, for your love to this church. You have bought this church with your blood, purchased it through what you have done on the cross of Calvary. And we are privileged, O oh Lord, to be, to be a part of your New, Te New Testament church, of which uh, she is also your forthcoming bride during the wedding feast of the Lamb. We just thank you, O oh God, for this, because you have entrusted us, O oh Lord, uh, to be a witness to all nations so that many people will come to know Jesus as their Savior. And we thank you, Lord, for the different missions established through um, CBMBC family. And thank you, Lord, for the souls who took part and a uh, member of this church um, uh, uh, institution that you have started during your personal ministry, that we, Lord, will fulfill the task that you have given unto us not based on our strength, but based on the power that is within us as we obey your commandments and abide in Christ, for without him, we can do nothing. And thank you, Lord, for the souls that have been saved and added to the church through water or scriptural baptism and who are discipled and become uh, godly uh, believers in Christ who also extend their 
knowledge about the gospel so that people will be saved. And Lord, we pray and we lift up all our prayer requests uh, for some of our brethren. We thank you, Lord, for the safe uh, journey of Sister Saul and Sister uh, Leia. Um, they arrived in the Philippines safely, and we just pray, Lord, that uh, you will take care of them, especially that they are um, pregnant, oh God. Take care of the uh, child that they are bearing, and we also pray that uh, they were uh, going to have a normal delivery soon. Lord, we thank you for the answers to our prayers, and it's so in numerous, oh God that if we'll name it one by one, we will be overwhelmed of your goodness and of your uh, loving kindness towards us. So Lord, I pray that uh, one day soon or next week or the next few weeks from now, uh, we could gather as a church, we could congregate to, to one another because we miss each other. So Lord, we just pray that it will come into place. So forgive us, O oh God, for the sins we have committed against thee and all these things we ask. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Hear our prayer, O oh Lord. Hear our prayer, O oh Lord. Incline the near to us and grant us thy peace. Amen. Amen, amen, and amen. 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 Now, before the message of the word today delivered by our pastor, we will hear a special song rendered to the Lord by the CBNBC choir. May you be blessed.
it's so wonderful to hear the choir sing and uh, despite this uh, recorded uh, video however it really touches my heart as uh, you just think about carry your candle and that is the uh, mandate of the Lord Jesus Christ to his church to go into all the world and preach the gospel and carrying the candle of the light of Jesus Christ so that those people who are in darkness of sin they will find the true light who is a person and that person is Jesus Christ so once again I just want to congratulate the CBNBC family a uh, happy 30th anniversary. So we are celebrating during the Wednesday uh, Zoom uh, video conference with the ch church members family. However, as this um, pandemic hopefully will be over, we're going to have a celebration uh, together with the church uh, at some point that will be scheduled um, perhaps uh, uh, before the end of the year, or we just don't know how the Lord will lead us. And I just want you to uh, think about uh, being a part of the church family we're in. It's so interesting because uh, Jesus bought this church through his blood. And I want you to focus on those verses that I'm going to share with you. And the title of the message I'm going to share with you today is Why I Miss My Church Family. Why I Miss My Church Family. And I hope you do so. Uh, some of our friends in uh, uh, regular tender just uh, rung to me uh, on his mobile phone and asking, Pastor, are we going to meet on Sunday? And I said, well, I just don't know uh, what would be the regulation. We just wait and see. And he said, uh, we really miss the church. We want to be with the church family. Indeed, it's very important why we need to be in the church family. And as we will going to take on on this uh, passage of the scriptures, I have made another poem based on the acronym of the word church. C-H-U-R-C-H. And here C stands for Christ died and purchased his bride with his blood. Uh, you can see that in um, the book of Acts chapter 20 verse 28 that Christ purchased his church. That is the New Testament church who is his bride. He gave his life for it. He purchased it. He bought it with his blood. And, um, and then uh, uh, the price here, according to 1 Corinthians chapter 6.20, we, we are bought with a price. We are bought with a price, not with money, but with the precious blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. Now, letter H here represents human beings gain eternal life through repentance and faith. And that is in Acts chapter 20, verse 21, tells us repentance toward God and faith on the Lord Jesus Christ. And look, can you also look that in John 5, 24, which says, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, if he hears my word and believeth on him that sent me, shall not come into condemnation, but is passed from death unto life. Very clearly, in Ephesians 2, 8 and 9, many of you have memorized this verse. For by grace are ye saved through faith. It is not of ourselves. It is the gift of God, not of works, lest anyone should boast. And here in Titus 3, 5 also tells us, not by works of righteousness which we have done, but according to his mercy, he saved us. So that's the letter H. Now let's go to letter U of the word church. U stands for utilizing our time, our talent, and treasure to serve and honor Him. You can find it in Romans 12 verse 1. I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. 
In Matthew chapter 6, verse 19 and 21, it tells about that we must not lay up treasures on earth, but we must lay up treasures in heaven. Where there's no uh, rubbers, there's no mooth that would rust it, that would eat it up, because wherever your heart is, there your treasure may be. And then we also found it in the book of Matthew chapter 25 verses 14 to 30. The story of the three men that his master gave them some talents or money to invest something. And you know this story. And three of them uh, invested it but the third person did not invest it. And one day when the master came he uh, asked accountability for what uh, um, what those uh, three uh, men had been given that uh, uh, talents uh, from their master. And now letter R, letter R here stands for reminding. Reminding one another to grow in grace and in the knowledge of him. Second Peter chapter 3 verse 18. This is the command of Peter that we must grow in grace. Grow in grace and in the knowledge of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. That is our responsibility as a church. To let those who, uh, who become part of the church family that they will grow. And it is also the obligation of a church member to grow by the grace of God. Because he, God does not want us just to become babies all the time. He wants us to grow, to be mature in our faith. And wants to establish it so we could easily share it to others who are still not Christians or need to be saved. And letter C stands for comforting each other in times of crisis in life like COVID-19. That is in 1 Thessalonians 4.18 which tells us, Wherefore comfort one another. And in the Second Corinthians chapter 1, verse 4 also tells us about the God of all comfort who comforteth us. And in the comfort that we receive from God, we will comfort others also. So that's the role of the church. And then, and finally here in letter H, the last uh, letter of the word church, happiness. Happiness and joy unspeakable at the end of the age, for we will be together forever with him. That is the promise of Jesus to his church. In John 14 says, let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. In my father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you, I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go to prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself. That where I am, there ye may be also. And here in 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 17, this is the time that the church will be raptured and be together with the Lord forever and ever and ever and ever. Amen. So that's the word church that portrays of our situation. I just read it without the verses that is connected to it because this is a poem so you can see that there is a rhyme. Christ died and purchased his bride with his blood. Human beings gain eternal life through repentance and faith in Him. Utilizing our time, talent, and treasure to serve and honor Him. Reminding one another to grow in grace and in the knowledge of Him. Comforting each other in times of crisis in life like COVID-19. And happiness and joy unspeakable at the end of the age. For we will be together forever with Him. Praise the Lord for that. Now, we want you to join with me in reading the verses of the scripture here in Matthew chapter 16, verse 18. This is one of the key verses that we're going to take up this afternoon. Matthew chapter 16, verse 18. It says here, And I say unto thee that thou art Peter, and upon this rock I will build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. 
Now, Jesus Christ had been talking to his disciples and he asked them who they thought he was. Who they thought he was. Some things that he is uh, the prophet or like Elijah or, or as Moses. And here, this is what Peter said and answered Jesus so that you, you can get the whole uh, uh, story about this. Let's start to read in verse 13 in Matthew chapter 16. Verse 13, when Jesus came into the coast of Caesarea Philippi, he asked his disciples, saying, Whom do men say that I, the Son of Man, am? And they said, Some say that thou art John the Baptist, some Elias, and others Jeremiah, or Jeremiah, or one of the prophets. He said unto them, But whom say ye that I am? So he was directing to his disciples. And Simon Peter answered and said, Thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. And this is the answer of Jesus in verse 17. And Jesus answered and said unto him, Blessed art thou, Simon Barjona, for flesh and blood hath not revealed it unto thee, but my Father which is in heaven. And the key verse that we have read here, And I say unto thee, that thou art Peter, and upon this rock I will build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. Shall we bow our heads for prayer? Father, we thank you for the time that you have revealed unto us in many wonderful ways. Especially, Lord, that you have instituted the church here in Copenhagen, the CBNBC family, Copenhagen Bethel Missionary Baptist Church, celebrating her 30th year. Lord, it is through you, because of you, that this church has existed. And we pray that you will use this church, O oh God, to spread the good news, not only here in Denmark, as well as to other countries. And you have done it already, Lord, through the years. You have established a church in Malmo, and one of our members established a church in New Zealand, and, uh, and missions in Barcelona, the Netherlands, in Belgium, and started many years ago also in Oslo, Norway, and even many missions and churches in the Philippines. So we thank you, O God, because it is not us. It is you who made it. And we're just following your command your orders because you love the world so much. You love us, all oh God, that you offered your life as a living sacrifice who shed your blood in the cross of Calvary so that all our sins will be forgiven. And thank you, Lord, as you have said in your word, without the shedding of blood, there is no remission of sins. Lord, I pray that you bless our time together. And bless me, O oh God, I, I, I preach your word. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen and amen. Now here, in this verse, in Matthew chapter 16, verse 18, it tells us here that when Jesus uh, said to Peter, Thou art Peter, and upon this rock I will build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. Now, Jesus wasn't uh, saying that the church will be built on Peter with him as the first pope. Now, Peter here, when Jesus said, And upon this rock, he was not referring this rock to Peter. Because Peter means Petro, or rather a small rock or a small stone. As we will see here in John chapter 1, verse 41 and 42, he first findeth his own brother Simon and said unto him, We have found the Messiah, which is being interpreted the Christ. And here in verse 42 it says, And he brought him to Jesus, and when Jesus beheld him, he said, Thou art Simon, the son of Bar-Jonah, or Jonah. Thou shalt be called Cephas, which is by interpretation a stone. So when Jesus was saying here, 
and upon this, um, thou art Peter, and upon this rock, he was not referring to Peter at this time because the rock here refers to the Lord Jesus Christ. The word Petros is a small stone. And the Petra, that is rock here, is a mountain peak. It's a firm foundation. And now if you look back to the Old Testament, in Deuteronomy chapter 32, verse 4, it says, He is the rock. His work is perfect, for all his ways are judgment, a God of truth, and without iniquity, just and right is he. Now in the New Testament, in 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 4, it says, And did all drink the same spiritual drink, for they drank of that spiritual rock. Notice the word rock here, that followed them. And that rock was Christ. So therefore when Jesus Christ was saying, And thou art Peter, and upon this rock, he was referring to himself. I will build my church. It's not to Peter that is built, the church is built. It is to the Lord Jesus Christ. Here in the New Testament, it speaks of Jesus as the foundation of the church. It is his body. Turn your Bibles to 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 11, which says, For other foundation can no man lay than that is laid, which is Jesus Christ. If there is a founder of a certain religion other than Jesus Christ, they are not the true New Testament church of Jesus Christ. There are many religions or many churches today started by men and then try to claim that it was founded by Christ. But without them, those religious group or religion will not come into being without them. But Jesus started already his church. And the Bible tells us no man can lay that is being laid already. It's the Lord Jesus Christ who is the foundation of the church. Now we could see here that Jesus was stating that upon the faith of believers in the teaching of the gospel, he would build his church. The word built here, I will build my church, does not refer to the future because some believe that the church started during the Pentecost, that is after Christ already ascended to heaven. Jesus is the one who started the church. The Holy Spirit empowered the church during the Pentecost time. And when Jesus said, here, I will build my church, it does not mean it refers to the future. Because the word will in the Greek word is oikomideso, which means it's progressive. It's already in existence. I'll give you an example. When I say, I will build my body, it means I have already my body, but I need to strengthen it. I need to go to the gym. I need to exercise to build my muscles of my body. This is what Jesus Christ is saying. He is saying, I will build my church. He said, he placed it upon the faith of the believers and the teaching of the gospel that he will build his church. Now, the church is the vehicle through which the kingdom of God works through in the New Testament age. And you will notice also here that the gates of hell shall not prevail or overpower the church. But those who are not part of the church do not receive the same protection. Praise the Lord. If you are part of the Lord's New Testament church, you have the protection because Jesus will say, I will build my church and even the gates of hell, the gates of persecutions, the gates of problem that would happen to the church will not prevail, will not overcome. So if you are part of the church, praise the Lord because you are under his protection. Now, why is it that we should be a part of the Lord's church? What benefits do believers receive when, when they assemble with other believers and are part of the true New Testament church of the Lord Jesus Christ? 
Three things that I'm going to discuss this afternoon. Number one is we experience the presence with us. We experience the presence of God in us. The presence of Jesus Christ in his church. Now in John chapter 20, that is shortly after the resurrection, 10 of the disciples of Jesus were gathered together. Why it's 10? There were 12, right? One is uh, Judas who committed suicide. So there's 11. But why is it 10? Because Thomas was absent. So there were only 10. And there they gathered together in, in a certain location, hiding against, you know, the authorities because they were in fear. Perhaps they will be arrested also. Jesus Christ was just crucified. And they were thinking that since they're part of the disciples of Jesus Christ network, then they want to be safe also. So they scattered. They went around, but they gathered together in the first day of the week, and that is Sunday. Now, Thomas was not in the church. Let's look here in John chapter 20, verses 19 to 20. It tells us here, then the same day at evening, being the first day of the week. What's the first day of the week? That's Sunday. When the doors were shut, that means it's closed. And where the disciples were assembled for fear of the Jews. So they assembled together. And came Jesus. Remember, the doors were shut. Jesus appeared to them. Jesus and stood in the midst of them and said unto them, Peace be unto you. And when, in verse 20, he had so said, he showed unto them his hands and his side. Then were the disciples glad to see Jesus resurrected from the dead when they saw the nail prints of the hands of Jesus. And also on his side, he says here, then were the disciples glad. When they saw the Lord. And you know what happened? Thomas missed out that day. Because he was troubled and broken. Perhaps he heard that all the disciples will meet in a certain area. But he just been overwhelmed of sadness. Or was troubled because his Savior died. And he missed out on the encouragement that comes from the presence of Jesus. When we group together as a church, we could feel the presence of Jesus. Amen. Because he promised that two or three gathered in my name. I am there in the midst of them. So when we are a church, we are experiencing the presence of Jesus. And now, Thomas here, his doubts were so strong that he wouldn't believe in the resurrection Jesus unless he saw and felt his scars. And later we see here, he finally met with the others to find what was missing in his life. And we go forward in verse 26 and 28 of John chapter 20. And after eight days again, so that is the second Sunday... His disciples were within, and Thomas with them. So therefore, there are already 11. Then came Jesus, the doors being shut, the same as the previous week. The doors were shut. Remember, Jesus already resurrected, so therefore, he could go through the walls. He is not flesh and blood anymore. He is flesh and spirit. And that is what happened when a person will be resurrected in a glorified body. And that would take place also to us during the rapture. We're going to have a glorified body. And here J Jesus showed to them, the, the Bible says, the doors being shut and stood in the midst and said, peace be unto you. The same words Jesus mentioned the previous week. Then said he to Thomas. So Jesus focused his eyes to Thomas, who was absent the previous Sunday. You see here, sometimes if you miss church, you miss something. You miss the blessing. 
You miss the presence of Jesus. So it's important how it is vital to be involved in joining together with the church. Now, at this pandemic, we could not convene each other, but you can convene in your homes. We could convene each other. There are many uh, social platforms in the social media that we could use, that still we could connect it to one another, despite without our physical presence. But God has given and utilized this format that we could continue to worship the Lord in spirit and in truth. Then you will see here, Jesus looked to Thomas and he said to Thomas, Reach hither thy finger and behold my hands. Jesus is saying, Thomas, here, here, here's my hand. Try to touch it with your fingers. And then reach out your hand and put it on my side. You can feel the scar here of my side. And Jesus said, and be not faithless, but believing. And you know what happened? After this, in verse 28, And Thomas answered and said unto him, My Lord and my God. My Lord and my God. What did, what did Thomas find when he assembled with the church? Here, three things that we could see what Thomas find when he should be at the church the previous week. Number one is peace. Peace is not the absence of conflict. That's the negative peace that the world is offering without conflict. But the peace that Jesus is saying here is that the inner peace that despite the trouble around you, you still rested in peace. Peace, absence, not the absence of conflict, but the blessed assurance that God is in control, rest for his heart and for his spirit. And I know that many Christians felt this type of peace. Despite the pandemic, many people were so confused, perplexed, troubled. Because they're afraid of this pandemic. Of course, we as Christians, we have also some fears. Because it would happen to us anytime. The Bible tells us that God could pour out blessings for the just and for the unjust. He could pour out the rain for the just and for the unjust. It means for the saved and the unsaved. We will all experience that. There is no exemption. Christians are already infected also with the virus. And that's the reality. But the only thing the, that made the difference between us and to those who don't have Christ in their lives, we have inner peace. We have inner peace. We can rest assured that God is in control because the peace of God that passeth understanding that despite the trouble around in the world, you can look forward that we have our hope in heaven one day when God would take us, not even today, perhaps the next day or next month or next year or any time because it is an appointment. It is appointed unto man once to die and after this the judgment. As Chris said, we know that this would take place. So therefore, we have peace. Whether we like it or not, when we leave this world, we know that we will be together with the Lord forever and ever. The second thing that Thomas find when he assembled with the church is peace. First, Rather, peace. And the second is faith. So, number one, peace. Second is faith. Thomas fell to his knees and cried, My Lord and my God. My God, he may have been doubting Thomas, but from that day forward, he never doubted again. He trusted his Savior. And if you honestly seek Jesus, Jesus will come to you and remove all your doubts. Amen. He will remove all your doubts. And Thomas experienced it when he was present with the church. And he saw Jesus when he cried, my Lord and my God. 
and it strengthened his faith and his doubts were all clear. Maybe some of you have some doubts of your faith. But if you regularly come to church and seek God, your doubts and fears will turn into faith. Your doubts and fears will turn into faith. Now, the third thing that Thomas find when he assembled with the church is consecrate. Consecrate. To consecrate yourself is to, is to answer God's call to spiritual consecration. This means that making a conscious, willing decision to dedicate your soul, mind and heart and body to God. This decision must be one of will, of intelligence, and affection. And only you can make the decision to consecrate yourself to God. And Thomas here was so filled with Christ that he consecrated himself to God. That he soon left Jerusalem never to return again. He evangelized through Iraq, through Iran, and even to India. And there, he courageously gave his life as a martyr for Jesus Christ. That is what Thomas found when he assembled together with the church. So if you're not yet part of the church, I challenge you to be a part by first, you need to be born again. You need to be, be saved and uh, scripturally baptized so that you'll be a part of the local church. And what you experience, what Thomas experienced, you will also experience. You will have peace, faith, and you can consecrate yourself to God because your faith is not in vain. In the book of Psalms, chapter 122, verse 1, the verse said, I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. There's a song for that. I could remember in my Sunday school class. I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. I was glad when they said unto me, let us go unto the house of the Lord. Now this song says, I was glad. It does not say, I was sad. Are you glad? Are you looking forward to meet God through his church? Through the assembling of oneself together? Now in this pandemic, how can we go to church? Now even though you worship through online service on the live streaming, First you need to do is physically wear your Sunday school clothes. When you are even in your living room, remember you are facing God, you are worshiping God. You must be on your Sunday clothes, the clothes that you can see that God is glorified. Something that honors the Lord. Well, perhaps some of you are in your pajamas. I remember, <laughs> we are a church. We are together worshiping the Lord. Now, I could not see you if you are wearing that, but God sees. If God is the one that you are worshiping, then you must honor him physically on what you are wearing. Because it pertains also of your attitude toward Christ. And the second is that you need to prepare your print Bibles. Not the digital Bible and the mobile phone, but the print Bibles. If you don't have print Bibles, I wish that you have one. You can buy it in different stores, in online. There's a lot of Bibles there. Have your print Bibles then together with your markers. You know, different markers because when you come across the verse, then try to make a line, make a color line. And remember, perhaps you will say, well, the promises of Jesus, I will uh, place it in red. I come across of a certain preacher that says, uh, some of you have Bibles, what is what we call red letter edition. And the pastor asked, who among you have those Bibles with 
Red Letter Edition. Many raised their hands and they said, well, I know that you have these Bibles, the red letter. It means that all those red letters were uh, spoken by Christ. So some of you have known that. If you don't have a red letter, if you come across with a le red letter Bible, all the words in red are the words of Christ. But the pastor said, you know what? What I prefer is not the red letter, but the R-E-A-D Bible. You know what is R-E-A-D? It means not red color, but read. Are you reading your Bible regularly? And that's the best place. Now, when you are preparing yourself for the live streaming online service, then prepare your Bibles, prepare your markers, and then have your notebook and pen. Have your notebook and pen. Record those verses. If the pastor is uh, speaking faster or you cannot catch up, just note down the reference. Then find it later on your own personal study. And the second thing to prepare worship during this pandemic is spiritually. First, you ready physically. Second, spiritually. Prepare your heart, mind, and soul to worship God. So don't make any unnecessary movements when the worship starts and sing out the hymns and songs together from your heart. Remember, God is present and looking to you in your living room or wherever you are. Third, if you want to say amen in the pastor's statement or the Sunday school statement, like Brother uh, Philip during the Sunday school class, say it and then write it down in the comment section below. You know what? Your pastor or your Sunday school teacher will be encouraged that you are focused. You place amen. That means you go for it. Amen is means so let it be. You agree with what the preacher or the teacher is saying. So if you are, if you are not serving and worshiping a church family, you are missing out greatly. You are missing out greatly. Can you worship God anywhere? Of course, absolutely. But if you are not part of the local church, then your relationship with God will never be as close as it could be and your spiritual life will be less full than you need it to be. Why? Because sin hinders our relationship with Christ. God commands us that our assembling together must be based on what the scripture tells us in Hebrews 10.25. Hebrews 10.25 tells us not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together, as the manner of some is, but exhorting one another. And so much the more, as you see the day approaching. You know, in these troublous times, we need connection with the church family. We need to be together praying, comforting one another. Because Jesus Christ is coming very soon. And some of the reasons why you miss some privileges or opportunities to be blessed in the house of God is because most people neglect also to give their tithes and offerings if not attending church. That's another sin. You miss the privilege of God's blessing upon your life. Don't you know that the Bible says, if you give to the poor, you lendeth it to the Lord. And that's the place that you could serve. God, not only in your talents, abilities, but as well as your treasures. The church is the body of Christ. If you sever yourself from the spiritual body, your spiritual life will uh, wither and die. And also, in not being part of the church, we hinder the body of Christ because we are not doing our part. i just give you an illustration when we started to collect some twigs or some woods to create a fire. And when there's enough wood or sticks that we could gather together and then try to light it up, then little by little, it will produce a big, big fire, balls of fire. Now, while it is burning, I try to take one of those twigs, one of those woods, separate from the group there. 
you could see that it is still lighting. Then little by little, if you place it aside, the, the light, the fire begins to, you know, to put off until eventually there's no fire anymore. That is the description of the church. Being a part of the church family, you will be on fire with the Lord as the church will be on fire for Him. But when you are separating yourself from the church, little by little you lose your interest in reading the Bible and even you are not praying anymore and you are now doing the things that you do before you became a Christian. You're going to the worldliness. That is the same is true. When a believer is not vital part of the church, his spiritual life will die and waste away. So we have here, we experience his presence with us. The second thing why we need to be in the church is we discover his purpose for us. We discover his purpose for us. That's the second thing. Now, before Jesus ascended back to heaven, he met with his disciples a couple of times to reveal to him his purpose for the church. Matthew 28, 19 to 20, you always hear these uh, marching orders of the Lord Jesus Christ. He says, and Jesus came and spake unto them, saying, all power, starting in verse 18, all power is given unto me in heaven and in earth. Go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them all things whatsoever I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you always, even unto the end of the age or end of the world. Amen. Jesus said, power and authority. Jesus Christ, the King of kings, the Lord of lords, He has authority over death. He has authority over the grave. He has authority over Satan. And He has authority over the church. And He commanded the church, all believers, to be active participants in three of the church's main activities. Number one is... Preach to them, share the gospel, lead them to salvation. Jesus said, go ye and teach all nations. Share to them, Jesus. Second is after they are saved, the next step is baptize them. After salvation follows scriptural baptism. Baptism cannot say, but baptism is an evidence of your salvation. It indicates that you are saved. It cannot be seen by people. Your faith cannot be seen. But it can be shown through your action. And third is teach them to obey God, Christ's commandments. This is involved teaching the scriptures, doctrine, equipping. And Jesus Christ demanded that anyone professing to know him to live a holy life. Live a life separated from the world. Don't follow what the world says. John said, love not the world, the things of the world, for the love of the Father is not in them. At the ascension of Christ, Jesus reminded them of his purpose for the church. Turn your Bibles to Acts chapter 1, verse 8. Acts chapter 1, verse 8. It says, but ye shall receive power after the Holy Ghost is come upon you, and ye shall be witnesses unto me, both in Jerusalem and in all Judea and in Samaria and unto the uttermost part of the earth. What you will notice here first, it was a command. Ye shall. It's a command, ye shall be witnesses unto me. So the church shall be a witness. All believers are to be witnesses. And the command is not limited geographically because it says both in Jerusalem, in all Judea, in Samaria, and to the uttermost part of the earth. Not only your Jerusalem, like for example here in Copenhagen. It should be also in Judea that would be your in Newland, or that would be in another place here in Denmark. And then in Samaria, some places like mixed people. 
and the remotest part of the earth and other nations of the world. That is both, it means at the same time. It's not one by one. Both, it means together at the same time. And the command here broke down racial barriers. Racial barriers. He specifically mentioned Samaria. The people in Samaria are half Jews. They were married, the Jews were married to non-Jewish people. So half, half. So they were Samaritans and lack of prejudice between Jews and Samaritans. I sometimes hear people say that they can live as a Christian and witness about Jesus Christ without going to church. Is that true? Can you do that? Can you share the gospel and baptize them? But that question is, how many have you led to Christ? And how many were baptized? Without being part of the church, how many new believers have you discipled and taught to be strong, growing Christians? How effective have you been at teaching people to obey the commands of Christ if you are not keeping them yourself? When we unite ourselves with a church fellowship, we become an effective part of all these things. The people we lead to Christ are brought into the church that Christ chose to establish. Then believers are taught the word of God and disciple. Then we become more effective in reaching the world with the gospel through local and international mission programs that we support. So the third thing is that we receive his power at work in us. We receive his power at work in us. First, we experience his presence with us. Second, we discover his purpose for us. And third, we receive his power at work in us. After the ascension, the disciples, they were about 120, gathered themselves together to earnestly pray and seek God's will and to worship. And on the day of Pentecost, God answered their prayers and the power of the Holy Spirit fell upon them. Let's look in Acts chapter 2, verses 1 to 4. In Acts chapter 2, verses 1 to 4. And when the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were all with one accord in one place. And suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind. And it filled all the house where they were sitting. And there appeared unto them cloven thongs of, uh, like as of fire. And it sat upon each of them. And they were all filled with the Holy Ghost and began to speak with other things as the Spirit gave them utterance. Now, what were the results of this Holy Spirit baptism? Well, number one is the awesome presence of God was obvious. The Holy Spirit swept in and filled its person. And second here, there was a spiritual gifts being bestowed. It mentions about thanks. Thanks here is not a mumbling of words. Thanks here refers to languages. It's like you're asked, what is your mother tongue? It means, what is your mother language? My mother language is uh, uh, Tagalog or Filipino because I'm a, from the Philippines. So that's my mother tongue. And here these people, when they were assembled during the Pentecost, the disciples only learned one language. And that language is the Galilean language. But when the Holy Spirit baptized them, they were speaking in another language. What does it mean? All those people who are from different places, from Africa, Middle East, and Asia, heard them speaking their own language. What's the miracle here? The disciples still speak with their Galilean language, but all those different people who listened to them spoke in their own language. That's marvelous. That's how God fulfilled the Great Commission so that they can go to uh, other parts of the world. So when these people returned to their places, remember, they came to Jerusalem to celebrate the Pentecost. They went from other countries. And when they returned back to their countries, what they heard from the disciples, they preached it also towards those people who speak the same language as they speak. And the words of God and the gospel spread throughout the region. And we can see how God has bestowed that gifts. 
And the third point is that the power of God filled the believers. First, we have the awesome presence of God was obvious. The spiritual gifts were bestowed. Third, the power of God filled the believers. Immediately, Peter stood up before a crowd of people and preached the gospel. In the past, Peter just say some words right away. You know, he is a sanguine personality. He speaks before he thinks. There are some people like that. They are very sanguine. They, they speak before they're thinking. And then sometimes what they speak hurts other people. And sometimes it's good also. But here, Peter was presenting the gospel and there were 3,000 people got saved on that day. In Acts 2, 41 and 42. They were not only saved, they were also baptized and then added to the church. And they continued steadfastly in the apostles' doctrine and fellowship and in prayers and the breaking of bread and the Holy Communion. You can see that effect, that being a part of the Lord's church. And number four, the work of God was magnified. The work of God was magnified. In one generation, the gospel of Jesus Christ was being preached all over the world. And in Acts chapter 17, you can read how some opponents of the gospel complained to the authorities that these Christians had turned the world upside down. That's what the power of God can do. The work of God was magnified. It changed the lives of people. It changed your life because you come to know Christ. And God wants you to let others be changed also by the power of the gospel. That changed the lives of the disciples. That also will change our lives today. Because it's the same spirit that saved them through Jesus Christ. It's the same God that would save us today. Look around. There are many people who are still lost in their sins. You know what? They're waiting to hear the gospel presentation in a very clear way. Pray every day. Pray to God, Lord, lead me to a person that needs to be saved. Perhaps it's your loved ones. Perhaps it's your spouse who's not yet saved. Or your parents. Or your siblings. Or your friends. Or your co-employees. Or your employer. There's a lot of people around us. There are many things I miss about my church family. I miss the fellowship with each other. I miss the good food we share together. Amen. We miss that good food. And I miss the deep teaching time on Sunday school classes and Bible studies and fellowship. And I miss the joy, the laughter, the prayer we share on Wednesday night meetings and discipleship. And But most importantly, I miss the overwhelming presence of the Holy Spirit as we gather together to praise and worship the God of all creation. In the end, I miss you guys, my family, my church family. Praise the Lord. Let us pray. Lord, we're so overwhelmed of the reason behind why we need to be a part of your church. Sometimes it's difficult to explain it, oh Lord, in our human terms, but we know that it's the Spirit who guide us, who lead us into all truth, and it's through the power of Christ that we obtain the peace that passeth understanding. There are many people today who are still lost in their sins. We pray for their salvation. And there are also some people who already received Christ but has not been involved in the church. Has not yet followed you in scriptural baptism and church membership. 
We pray, O oh God, that they will make that special decision because it's a blessing to be a part of the church family. That we could work together, support one another, encourage one another, comfort one another. There are over 23 one another, one another's in the Bible, and we could not exercise it unless we are part of the local church. So I pray, Father, that many will decide to be a part of the local church through salvation, baptism, and church membership. Lord, oh God, if there's someone here who's not yet saved, listening to these words, that they will repent of their sin and put their trust in Christ alone. And this is what I ask from you. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. Now if some of you wants to receive Christ as your Savior, and you realize that you need to be born again in the Spirit, I challenge you to accept Him personally in your life. Trust in Christ. He's the only hope to everyone. He is always the answer to everything in life. So if you want to surrender your life to Christ, you may make this prayer as your own prayer. I just guide you in this prayer. This is not a magic formula that you will become saved. It's only a guide. It will just teach you what to say. Or if you have your own words, you are welcome to do it by yourself. But this is the thing. Admit that you are a sinner. Believe that Jesus Christ died for you. Confess him as your Lord and Savior. Are you willing to do that? If that is your decision, I will guide you in this prayer. You may repeat after me or join with me in this prayer. Father, I thank you for Jesus because he gives me hope and eternal life due to my sinful condition. I'm a sinner and have done many wrong in my life. And today I believe in your son Jesus Christ who died for me did not remain in the grave, but on the third day he was resurrected for my salvation. So Lord, I believe with all of my heart that as I repent of my sins and trust him as my Savior and Lord, I will obtain eternal life by faith alone. Lord, please forgive me and change my life. In Christ's name, amen. If you have made that prayer, I will say congratulations. You are part of the God's forever family. And then if you want to follow the Lord in baptism, you may indicate that to the pastor that is near you. Find some missionary Baptist church in your area that you could be a part of. And then be active in the church where you are in and be a blessing toward each other. And if you want to rededicate your life to Christ, you are already saved and you have missed something because you are not faithful in him. Why not recommit your life to Christ today? So as we sing this um, invitation song, um, give you the privilege to make your decisions in your own respective homes. If you indicated that you received Christ, please in the comment, write in the comment that you received Christ today or you want to be baptized, just indicate there and we'll help you wherever you are to find a church where you can be a part of. And then if you want to rededicate your life to Christ, you're a member of the CBNBC family, just say, I'm rededicating my life to Christ. So as we listen to the invitation uh, song and um, you can, um, Spend yourself in time in prayer at this point, and then we acknowledge your uh, response to the message of the gospel.
Thank you for those who made their decisions today. And uh, let us pray all together. Father, we thank you for those who respond to your message. And Lord, if there are some souls who got saved in this live streaming, we rejoice in that, O oh Lord. And we just look forward that many will view this, O oh God, and recorded video, and they will make the decision also. We also pray, Lord, to those who wants to follow the Lord in scriptural baptism and church membership, that you will guide them, Lord, to the church very close to them and in the area, oh God, that they could serve you. 
um, joyfully in the New Testament church that you have started. And Lord, we also pray for those who made their dedication or recommitment to Christ that they have um, realized that many things they have missed, oh God, the privileges to be a part of the fellowship, that you will restore them, oh God, to the fellowship and restore their joy of their salvation, that they could faithfully serve you in the church where you have called them to be a member. And we ask all these things. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. If you are sitting or standing down or standing up, you can sit down and uh, Brother Philip will uh, proceed to our further uh, time of the service today. We thank the Lord for the message of the word today. And we'll now continue to our offerings and our tithes. If you're a member of this local church, it is a privilege for us to return a tithe and our offerings to the Lord. If you're not a member and the Lord lays on your heart to support the work of CBNBC in sharing the good news to all nations, you are very welcome to give and may God bless you as you give. For our offertory scripture, we're going to read from the book of Malachi, chapter 3, verse 8 to 10. Will a man rob God? Yet ye have robbed me. But ye say, wherein have we robbed thee? In tithes and offerings. Ye are cursed with a curse, for ye have robbed me, even this whole nation. Bring ye all the tithes into the storehouse, that there may be meat in mine house. And prove me now herewith, said the Lord of hosts, if I will not open you the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing, that there shall not be room enough to receive it. May God add blessing upon the reading of his word, and we will now present our church's mobile pay and bank account information, and we will pray our offertory song, and you may give as we do it. May the Lord bless you as you give to his church and her work. Let us pray for the tithes and the offerings. Father in heaven, we thank you for providing all our needs and thank you that you make us content because of Christ in us. Help us, Father, to rest in your promises and not to worry about tomorrow but resting in the promise that you will provide our daily needs. 
Help us, Father, to seek first your kingdom and your righteousness. And Father, we pray that you bless and multiply the tithes and the offerings. And we pray, Lord, that the work of your church will expand to all nations, that the lost may hear the gospel and be saved. In Jesus' name, amen. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise Him, all creatures here below. Praise Him above ye heavenly host. Praise Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Amen. Amen. Let us sing our closing hymn together.
Praise the Lord, and we'll close the service with a word of prayer. Let us pray. Father, we thank you for the things that we have learned, how important it is uh, not only to be saved, but to be baptized and a member of your Lord's New Testament Church. Because this is the mandate that you have given to the disciples and to your churches throughout ages, that we must need to reach out the lost people to the saving knowledge of Christ, to baptize them who are saved, and to teach them uh, all the commandments that you have placed in your word. And thank you, Lord, for your promise that you will be with your church even to the end of age. Lord, I pray that we will utilize our time, our resources, our talents, so that many people will be saved. And we trust in you, O oh God, that through the conviction of the Holy Spirit and through the power of your word, many will come to Jesus as their Savior. Lord, I pray that you will bless CBNBC family and her missions and all the true churches that preach the good news of salvation that only Jesus Christ could bring. For your word tells us in the book of uh, Acts chapter 4, verse 12, Neither is there salvation in any other given among men under heaven whereby we must be saved. And that name is the name of Jesus of Nazareth. Thank you, Lord, for Jesus. Thank you, Lord, for the gift of eternal life to those who will repent and turn to him for salvation. And thank you, Lord, for your church that you purchase it with your blood. And Lord, being a part of the membership of your a local New Testament church, our hearts are rejoicing because you promise that uh, the glory will be to your church to whom Christ has started according to Ephesians 3, 21. And to him be glory in the church by Christ Jesus throughout all ages, world without end. And your word tells us that even the gates of hell cannot prevail against it. And in the book of Matthew 28, 19 to 20, and lo, I am with you always, even to the end of the world. So thank you, Lord, for being a part of your church. And thank you, Lord, that we could be used by you as we surrender ourselves in everything so that uh, your uh, uh, will will be done into our lives. And we ask all these things in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Lord, for saving my soul. Thank you, Lord, for making me whole. Thank you, Lord, for giving to me thy great salvation so rich and free. The grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Ghost be with you all. Amen. 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 Amen and amen. And just for a while, Brother Philip will... Uh, give you some information and announcements from the church family. God bless you and take care and be safe. Before we finish our worship service today, we will just share a few announcements. On this Wednesday at 6.30, we have our Bible study and it will be through the Facebook live streaming. And uh, for those who may not know yet, unfortunately, well, according to God's will, next week uh, we will not uh, have our church family camp, so it has been canceled for this year. But we'll pray that, that God will bless our next coming camp in his perfect timing. For our FBI students, as most of you know, there is an exam tomorrow. And it will be held here in the church building. And also for those who are not able to come in the other countries, 
you already have your schedules to take the exam and it's going to be through the laptop. So please remember your laptops tomorrow for the FBI exam. And also we have a need in our church and that is for two cameras that will be used for our live streaming. Uh, one of our cameras are, is greatly suffering. So we have an, a need for that, for two cameras that could be used for our live streaming. So if the Lord puts in your heart to donate for this purpose, you are very welcome. Uh, please note in your giving that it is for the camera campaign. And uh, this last week, we have been celebrating the birthday of Sister Lolita. That was the 11th of May. So we congratulate her. Amen. And also Brother Joshua, that was this Wednesday for his 18th birthday. Amen. And uh, just uh, yesterday, I believe, was the birthday, yes, of Brother uh, RJ. Amen. So not Romulo, but Rizel James. So congratulate, congratulations to you, brother. And uh, also on this coming Wednesday, we have our little Kirsten Hope, who is celebrating her birthday as well. And then on Friday, that's the other RJ, Romulo. He is celebrating his birthday there. So congratulations to you. So those are the coming birthday celebrants. Uh, if we haven't mentioned you, please uh, send a message to us so we can update our list of the birthday celebrants. So last and closing announcement, as some of you may know, uh, tomorrow in Denmark, the churches are allowed to open up again. So we are still researching uh, how we are going to uh, do that when the right time is. So we will keep you announced as the Lord leads. Uh, hopefully, we could all gather once again. So we will keep you announced uh, how the procedure will be. And uh, we know some of our brethren are looking into this. And hopefully by tomorrow, we should be able to know more. So that concludes the announcements. We believe that you've been blessed today and we thank the Lord for giving us this opportunity to worship him in spirit and truth through Facebook. And we pray that God would keep you and bless you throughout this week. May we shine our light for Jesus into this world and may he be glorified through our lives. God bless you all. We love you, brethren, and see you next time.